starting the audacity. Okay, I am starting the recording. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday, May 28th, 2020 Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting. The time is now 7.01 p.m., so I will call this to order. I will stop sharing the title card so we can actually we can see each other now. The first item on the agenda is normally the Pledge of Allegiance, which we are going to be omitting because of the, the nature of which we're doing these meetings, uh, being telepresence because of Governor Wolf's uh, stay-at-home orders around COVID-19 and all the other things that go along with that in terms of social distancing and everything else. So uh, the first item on the agenda to do is to approve the minutes of the April 25th, 2020 workshop meeting. And uh, let me actually quick grab this and throw it into the chat. For those of you who are participating, there is a chat or a uh, Google Drive that I have set up that anybody, assuming it's working correctly, it worked well when I tested it, uh, anyone can access this. And this contains the items that are normally up on the table for the meeting, the financial reports, the, the minutes from prior meetings. Uh, so if you are interested in viewing those, there's a, a chat icon down at the bottom. If you click that, it'll open up a window. It has a link. If you click that, there's a, a number of things that you can view at your at your discretion. Um, with that said, uh, those of us who are on the board have gotten the minutes ahead of time and had a chance to review them. Um, I'll motion to accept the April 25th, 2020 workshop meeting. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Jim Brooks. Do we have you, Jim? He, did he unmute himself and okay. add in the audio? Let me check. And the video? There you go. Is that it? <laughs> yep, there you are. Jim. <laughs> We're doing roll call. Jim. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Next order of business is to approve the minutes of the April 30th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. All motion to approve. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> Irene got it. <laughs> guys, but, roll right call, now. Peter. Hi. Irene. Jim. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, next item is to approve the minutes of the May 23rd, 2020 workshop meeting. Anybody want to go or should I do it? So moved. Okay, so I think Jim's going to make the motion this time around. Okay. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Or Irene seconding. Irene got it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is to approve the payment of bills for May 2020. A motion to approve. Second. I, uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Now is the section for public comments. Uh, Sue, did we receive any public comments via email? There were no emails and no messages, nothing. Okay. Um, can flip through the, the attendees here. I don't see anybody actively flapping their arms or, or waving or anything. <laughs> okay. I'm going to assume that there are no public comments. Uh, if there if there are, please speak up in the chat, and we can we can always revisit that. Um, the First agenda item is the emergency declaration. Uh, we made this back at the March Board of Supervisors meeting with the provision to extend for a period of time uh, lasting until further action by the board. Uh, I suggest that we don't do anything with this and we leave this in place until uh, everything has settled and we no, no, no longer need to have that in place. Okay, no objections, questions, comments, concerns. We'll move on to the next item. Next item is the PSAP conference, virtual workshop meetings. Uh, Sue has expressed an interest to attend uh, some of these conferences. Uh, the conference itself was canceled, and they're offering some of the seminars as virtual workshops instead. Uh, the registration fee is $99 for her to be able to attend. Uh, I motion that we approve the expense for Sue so that she can attend the needed or desired webinars. Second. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the treasurer. Uh, we received interest from Dan Klein, who uh, wanted to do the work of treasurer. The bond quote came back for $730 annually to have him bonded on the $900,000 bond that's required. Uh, I don't have any objections to, to appointing Dan. In fact, I'll, I'll go so far as to make the motion to appoint Dan Klein as the secondary treasurer for Marion County. Second. Are you saying alternate treasurer? Well, you said secondary there. You well, don't have something. Whatever the, the vernacular is on it. Because I know in the past we've delineated between the two. Um, well, currently, currently Irene is treasurer. Yeah. So I would say if it's been on the books previously as alternate, yep. I'll, just, I'll make the motion to appoint him as the, one of the treasurers. And we'll, we'll go from there. Um, I think, I think, if I remember correctly, it might be assistant treasurer. I think okay. was the term that has been used in the, in the past. I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. So I'll I'll amend the motion to be uh, appoint Dan Klein as the assistant treasurer for Marion Township. Second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Hi. Welcome aboard, Dan. We look forward to working with you. And I don't, I don't uh, see a video in there, so I can't tell if you're waving your arms or anything like that. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll connect with you and make sure that we, we start the ball rolling and getting you. Oh, really there's Dan. Hands up. He's waving. Oh, he's excited. There we go. Let me actually. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me ask. He you looks this. excited. <laughs> Hold on. It's uh, it's it's trying. It's trying to unmute him. There you Thank go. You. There we go. I, yeah, I look very forward to working with the board and to help Marion Township in any way that I can. Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. And the next order of business is related to that main of things. It's around QuickBooks. Uh, there are a number of items within QuickBooks that we are looking to get some professional assistance on addressing, uh, things that have been uh, left languish and uh, really should be set right. Uh, Irene made some phone calls and got some rates from various people around that particular uh, need. Uh, Irene, do you want to give us a quick recap around that? Yes, uh, we received a quote from, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the organization. I'm going to say Herbine for between 100 to 125 an hour, uh, $65 an hour from Aikens Accounting and um, $45 an hour from Rick Rule. So with money being what it is, I, I would recommend going with the $45 an hour estimate. Yeah, truth be told, the issues, at least as I understand them, are not- Most likely have them in office. What? I was gonna say, I don't, based on my understanding of the issue, and, and I'll, I'll actually put a pin in this and let you finish. I, I didn't hear you talking, otherwise I wouldn't have. Oh, okay. Um, where did you where did you hear me cut off? Uh, start from after the forty five dollars from rule. Okay, forty five dollars an hour from rule. Um, just being down at the office for time's sake, I uh, asked Sue if she felt comfortable having someone there between the hours that she's there, basically between nine thirty to two thirty. Um, I think that would be optimal. Uh, my guess is it, it's probably not going to take um, a professional to do this more than a week or so. Um, I'm hoping they're able to 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 uh, remedy the situation within that amount of time for us. I, I agree. Based on my understanding of the, the dysfunctions that exist, is it's mm -hmm. going to be not a huge amount of time. It's just going to be a lot more efficient to have somebody who really knows the ins and outs of accounting and QuickBooks in to, to get it and get it right, uh, especially with some of the other things that are involved with the bookkeeping. So I would, uh, and uh, Andy, keep me honest on this. I don't know that we're, we're definitely not going to be appointing anybody this evening, but um, I would I, I would dare to say that I don't need a motion to, to say, Irene, you should talk to Rick Wool further about trying to get an estimate on time, maybe talk to them in a little greater detail of what can be yeah. there. And then, yeah, I, I think that might be difficult. It's one of those things you don't know until you start doing the work. Okay. So, 
Well, in, in that case, yeah, I mean, you, you could always you, you could always put a put a cap on it. I mean, yeah, revisit, yeah. Revisit it later, so you, you know, you could you could vote to hire him. Um, you know, to do the job uh, as long as it's less than X number of hours. Yeah, like I said, I, I can't then, I can't imagine it would take longer than a week. So, do we want to provisionally authorize forty hours? Because then we can always revisit it too if we have to authorize additional time later. That's actually who the conservation district uses too as their outside support on QuickBooks. Okay. That's so, good. And actually, actually, about ten years ago, when we had an accounting person unfortunately have a health issue. We brought them in temporarily. They did a nice job. That's so, even better. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, in that case, I will make the motion to authorize uh, Rick Rule. To do up to 40 hours of work addressing the QuickBook issues. And, and just to be clear, I get no referral or anything out of it. That was just, they did a good job for us. And I know Tammy likes them at the conservation district because they help her with the, you know, doing the other functions of it that she didn't know. Then, you know, made it a lot more efficient for her, she said. Probably help out Sue a lot. Yeah, and, and Irene and Dan now for sure. So I'm right. I, I appreciate the, the recommendation. It, it certainly does help influence the position. Um, so uh, Sue, did you get the motion or do I need to repeat? Repeat it. Okay. I'm I'm motioning to authorize Rick Rule for up to forty hours of work on the books. Okay. Second. Second. <laughs> Any, mini, money, mo. Who wants Rock, it? Paper. <laughs> we'll give it to Jim since Irene had some. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the Marion Township website. They have been working with the folks at Civic for the, the uh, past week or so. Um, Peter, I can't hear you. I, I apologize. Um, I've been working with the folks at Civic Plus for the past week or so on getting the website design in. Uh, let me actually pull up the attachment here and I will share the screen out. Okay, that. Oh, wow, that's awesome. So some of the stuff, final design will change. The logo, the Marion Township, Berks County, Pennsylvania logo will be substituted uh, by really whatever we decide on as a logo. Uh, I opted for the, the circular format. I think that fits onto the page the nicest out of anything. And we'll be getting an actual panorama shot at some point. I have a, a couple of spots in mind I'm going to try to get a, a good picture of on a nice, clear, sunny day. Uh, so we actually have a, a piece of our township uh, on the main page rather than just stock footed. But um, the the design on this is we'll have a, a main menu kind of at the top there, which will be friendly for phones, mobile phone use, as well as things like iPads and tablets and stuff. Uh, and a couple of quick links right down the middle of the things that we thought were the, the biggest, most used items. Being able to attend meetings virtually, watch or listen to old meetings, uh, review old agenda notes in the, the document library, ordinances, things like that. Uh, the section for the community association, which we, we really want to try to help foster that inclusiveness and to, to help them meet their goal of getting the playground rehab. Uh, and then finally, in contact us page. Um, so Irene, Jim, Sue, and really honestly, even Andy and, and Jim McCarthy, um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on this? Because the, the next step is for us to commit to this design and we can get over to the actual like building of the site. I like it. I like the round Marion Township up at the top better than the one at the bottom. Yeah, we're probably going to get rid of the one at the bottom in all seriousness. 
that was one of the, the requests that I put over to him is I don't think it needs to be in both places, to be entirely honest. It's a little redundant. Right. Um, but the, the circular Marion Township logo, I haven't gotten time to sit down or, or took my wife to, to do it, um, is going to be a circular logo, kind of this is the same tune that you usually see like state seals where the writing is around the outside. And then I'm thinking since we, we have the, the Tulpahawken, we have the, the history of the turtle, there's that hat that's up in the room there that features the, the turtle. The, the embroidered turtle, uh, maybe trying to do something with that along with an outline of Marion Township, kind of the, the profile. So I need to get that together, but I'm thinking that would be a good top end area for the page. Uh, that would look nice while keeping the page relatively streamlined and simple. Keeps everything within a couple of clicks, regardless of what you're looking for. Yeah, Peter, I, I think it looks great. I mean, some, some websites are, are way too busy. This looks really um you know user friendly and easy to navigate yeah, which you. is really important so i think it looks good thank you just that center part where it says events meetings the small calendar upcoming meetings and very news yeah. on the, will it fill the page a little bit more will it be a little bit larger sort of yeah so the the way the web page is going to be put together is it's going to be responsive responsive meaning that it will size to fit whatever you're viewing it on. So if you're looking at it on a really, really big screen, the elements of the page will expand or contract to fit the space. If you're looking at it on a phone, rather than being side by side, they'll stack on top of each other. So you'd have like news and then the calendar. So that's one of the cool. things that as they go into building this, that we can we can focus on that a little more to say like, hey, we really want that. If you're looking at this on a really huge screen, like you're looking at this on a, a 55 inch television, we want the calendar to be the focal point. That's that's things that we can tell them during the design phase. This is just a, a, a mock-up. It's, it's actually the picture that they, they drew to show us what it's going to look like when it's done. I assume he's going to center that middle section better. Yeah. yeah, again, we can we can get everything centered. I personally like center line. But uh, again, that's that's things that we can hash out. Um, it's it's difficult not being in person, but Ultimately, I'd probably just hold my hand up to show you, like, if you're, if you're trimming that one side, that's more or less like what it's going to look like. You don't tend to, to side load things to, to the left or the right because it makes it hard for people to read. Looks great. Thank you. Uh, I'll pass along the, the kind feedback and the, the, the couple of small uh, critique items that we had over to him, and I'll turn him loose on, on the next stage of development. pretty nice you could share it with all of us yeah technology when it works it's a wonderful thing um speaking of technology uh focusing back on to the, the google drive and everything else uh, i did get the domain name registered for the next five years we have marion twp burks.com uh, i've also gotten that pointed to our old website for the time being so if you go to that url it will at least take you to some sort of page um, beyond that, there is an email address that we have associated with it. Uh, Sue, we did opt to go with office at Marion Township, but, okay. but I, I did set up an alias. So if you use secretary at Marion Town, uh, TWP Burks, it will work just as well. It will come in through that address as well. Um, I've also worked out the, the, the intricacies of doing mail forwards. So, uh, Irene, Jim, myself, the email box that you guys have that you use for the township business. If it comes through at Irene Selesky at MarionTWPBurks.com, it will go right to your, your actual account that you, you own and maintain. Um, we also have, I set this up this past week, uh, the ability to take in text messages. So as long as I get the short codes that you need to put in for the text, uh, we can start to actually handle things like if somebody texts burn and their address to the township, to the either the phone number that we have associated to it, or the email, we can get a notice either on an email account or on a phone that somebody is burning. Um, nobody bothers to tell us about that, but it is part of the burning ordinance. Uh, likewise, we could start taking reports of roads that have potholes under the same sort of thing, that if you text the word road and a location to this, we'll know that there's an issue there that we need to take a look at. Um, lots, of, lots of neat things that we can do with this. We just gotta determine what all the use cases are that we wanna try to address, and uh, I'll try my best to make it happen. Thank you for setting it up, Peter. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you. 
Uh, any further questions, comments, or concerns around the website or the technology? You'll have to explain it to me. Oh, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll be glad to, to come into the building one of these days or, or sit down with you on the Zoom thing like this and, and run you through the, the whole bit and bob. It'll be a bit of a change, but I think it's going to be things that are going to make everybody's life, yours, yours included, yours especially, actually, a lot easier. Um, specifically okay. around, for example, the meeting packets, even when we're back in the building, rather than printing out a whole bunch of papers for us to look at just for a meeting, we can have a PDF that we look at on a, a laptop or a tablet or something like that, and we actually only would have to post it once because the, by the nature of technology, you can post it once, yeah. Rain can get it, I can get it, Jim can get it, Andy can get it, Jim McCarthy can get it, uh, the folks at home, if it's something that we put into the public directory for, for them to look at it, they can look at it. Um, there's a lot of really nice things that we can do. Um, so just in case uh, everybody is not aware, we do post all of the meetings. I usually do it the day following. It takes a little time to encode. Uh, but I've been posting all of the uh, meetings to YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and search Marion Township, uh, we're like literally the only channel called Marion Township. You can't miss us. <laughs> so uh, moving on to the next agenda item to, in, in an effort to keep the meeting moving is the primary election day. Uh, that is Tuesday, June 2nd. Uh, the building will need to be opened and closed for the poll workers. In the past, we gave the judge of elections a key. Uh, four out of five poll workers will not be working. Uh, the county will be supplying the poll worker that is there, a face mask and shield, hand sanitizers, gloves, and tape to mark the floor so that people actually observe the, the proper distancing. Um, we are going to need two to three folding tables, though. And I know, uh, Jim, you had been looking around for prices around that and uh, decent tables. Uh, did you have one of the Sam's Club that you were looking at? Sam's Club was the least expensive. They were about $80 a piece. Okay. $79.97 or something like that. Okay. I'm thinking it's, it's going to be useful to have. This is something that, just as a, a generality, we should have two folding tables. Um, I'm personally thinking we go with three. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to authorize, um, I, I won't be specific about this, I'll just make a motion to authorize the purchase of three folding tables for $80 a piece plus tax. I can go okay. to the club tomorrow if anyone wants to join me. Uh, it'll probably be you or Jim based on my okay. schedule, but uh, coordinate amongst yourselves. Uh, I think Sue is looking for a second on the motion. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the the road project for 2020. Um, I did just relatively recently get the opportunity to finish the visual portion of where we're going to be doing road work and they pull this up and I like to share that out. Um, there's my name on the computer. Okay, let me know if you're able to see that okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a rough overview of the roads that are on the, the 2020 plan. The orange ones are the ones where we think we're gonna need some remedial work around uh, underlayment and things like that before we do an oil and chip. Uh, the red are just ones that uh, are probably just gonna be oil and chip. So I'm gonna try to get out to look at that I'm going to send this around to you guys. It is out on, what was that on the Google Drive? Um, but uh, I'll send this around via email. That way everybody has it. Let's try to make a point to drive that, see if there's anything that we need to, to do. Uh, that way we can get the packet prepped for the next meeting to, to authorize it to go out to bid. It's already been authorized to go oh. out to bid. Thank you, um, sir. The road project has been authorized to go out to bid, not yeah. the overlay. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for keeping me honest on that, Sue. I had forgotten about that. Um, so we need to decide what to fix and get that 
bid out before we have them oil and chip. Otherwise, you're just going to be putting uh, good on top of bad, essentially. Any questions, comments, or concerns there, or do we do we all kind of agree that we need to need to make a circuit of these roads and, and see if there is things that really jump out of us as, as problematic, and then getting somebody else with an estimate. I agree. Okay. So in, in the past, that's been Charlie Parrish, right? That we've enlisted to, to take a look at that for needs? No, Jim McCarthy has put it on 10 bids. Oh, no, no, no. I mean like the, the overlay, like actually looking at it and going, do we need an overlay on this or what's the... Oh, no, no. Frank went around with Reber and Zerby. Okay, so I'll just I'll call Reber and Zerby then. Yeah, and I think in the past, I think the last time that we did this... Um, I have to look at the minutes. I, I think they provided the work and then we we paid for the asphalt separately or something like that. I'd have to look at the minutes. Yeah. I, I, kind of, I actually kind of recall that. I think there was some there was some cost reason that we did that. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll call Reber and Zerby. Do you have their phone number? If I don't, I will call you soon. Okay. I, it was Clarence Reber, I think. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm sure I have it somewhere. Yeah, we'll say we'll connect, and if not, I can I can try and look them up on, on like uh, the yellow pages or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions around that? No. Okay. So then I would just say uh, Jim McCarthy at some point probably for next month. I'll be connecting up with you ahead of time. That way we can try to keep this meshed together, get uh, things in and in the right order so that we get the road work hopefully done this year. Okay, no problem. Okay. Yep, we can, it usually by the time we put it on Penby, it takes usually six weeks. You can get a bit opening, okay. but we can, uh, what I'll do is now that I know, you, are we doing uh, just oil and chip or are we doing overlay? We have a couple of roads that are going to need overlay. And uh, if you want, I'll, I'll shoot you an email after the meeting of the spots that we think I need to confirm, but we think might need an overlay. Um, the the packet of the oil and chip has actually, uh, thanks to, to Sue's correction there, um, has already been previously approved to be put out. And it's, it's for the most part, it's done. It just needs to be put up on 10 bid. We just need to make sure that we're not having somebody oil and chip a road that wouldn't be suitable for it. Right. And we're using liquid fuels. Charlie gave us the number and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. That's, it's, it's sometimes be... that takes the longest getting the number out of Charlie. If you <laughs> well, these, no, these were, no offense these, to Charlie. Yeah. These were the this was the um, 2018 and 2019 road project that never got done. Yeah. Right. Right. So does that never it's, change? Yes. Okay. Okay. Since the, it may. Since the golf course, you just want to check with Charlie because he lo loves to find a reason to not give you your money. Okay. So, I'll call I, did talk, I did talk to him this year, but I will clarify that with him. Okay. Just make sure if, it was, if it's a 2019 number, I know you're fine. If it's back to an 18 number, it may be too old. But basically, whatever he says, I mean, is the thing. I think okay. we, we redid it in 2019 because nobody bid on it. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, but I talked to him this year because I had him change the names. He had some of the names of the roads wrong. Okay. Yeah. And I have an email from him from March 17th saying he went over the contract and corrected the spelling of the roads. He, he attached both contracts for review. So I guess that means it's updated, huh? Then you're good. If he attached them for review, then he's, then you have an assigned valid number. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's uh, let's keep that rolling along because uh, it's it's overdue for it. But we've had a kind of a weird situation the past couple of years. We had a uh, for this is mostly for Irene and, and Jim Brooks. We we put a bid packet out and literally no one bid on it. <laughs> so um, you gotta you gotta I guess roll with the punches I suppose. But we have to to get it out there so we can at least try to get it done. And hopefully it's a big enough project because it's a couple of years worth of work accumulated. I would think somebody would want the work. What actually happened was it got put out so late that none of the contractors bid, bid it because they didn't have enough time to get the work done in the allowable PennDOT season. 
because uh, if you if you go outside the season and do it, PennDOT won't reimburse your liquid fuels. So, and the and the um, oil and chip season is shorter than the overlay season. So that's what happened that year. Makes sense, but uh, all things. But you really want to you really want to get your paving projects out to bid in like February, March, mm -hmm. January, February, March is get you your best pricing because they want to build their backlog. And, you know, we, we just, we see that across our townships that don't bid early are paying 10 to 15% more than the ones that put it out the early year. Okay. Hey, since the golf course is open, nobody's heard from Charlie. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Lynn Erickson emailed me and she, I guess she's on hold, just trying to get in. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even, did not see the people here. the that. meeting. Do you have anybody who's waiting? Uh, we, we had actually Lynn twice, but I didn't see her over there. So uh, she is she is now being joined in. Who is that, Peter? Um, uh, I, I did not notice that Lynn was queuing. I let Lynn in. She's uh, evidently on two devices because there's, there's two Lynn Ericsons that are, are joined. So, hi, Lynn. Sorry about the delay. I did not see you in the waiting room. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Wintersville and Stoutford Road intersection. Uh, this is the intersection that we had received uh, complaints around with the tractor trailers trying to make sharp turns. Uh, we did authorize McCarthy Engineering to do the needed study around uh, if tractor trailers should be prevented from, from turning there. And the bottom line is, yes, it is far too sharp of a turn. Tractor trailers should not be turning there. Uh, so our next step is to authorize Andy to prepare an ordinance so that we can place signage there. Um, we'll also need to coordinate with the neighboring municipality about placing signage at the opposite end so that we don't have the same problem coming from the other side and to contact the property owner at that intersection to have him pull the, the boulders that he's placed there back uh, a few feet so that they're no longer in the right of way. And is that a, an accurate statement of that's, yep. that? that's accurate. So um, yeah, if you just give me authorization to, to draft it, I'll circulate it to everybody so you can take a, take a peek at it. And in the meantime, I'd say just, you know, vote to authorize me to advertise it so we can get it in place for next meeting. Unfortunately, there's those uh, pesky advertising requirements um, that you have to, you have to have a minimum of, of seven advertised. Um, yeah. that's, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. I just want to, I want to see this go through as quickly as we can, but without uh, skipping any needed steps or anything like that. Um, so I'll do, so I'll do this as two motions. I'm going to motion to uh, authorize Andy to prepare the needed ordinance around the signage at um, Stoutsburg and Wintersville Road. Stuck in that? No, wait. Nope. Um, roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. I will also make a motion. Assuming you're ready, Sue. Ready. Okay. I'll make a motion to allow Andy to advertise the ordinance for Wintersville and School Road sign placement once completed. To advertise the ordinance for Wintersville and Stoutsburg Road. Yep, and I couldn't hear the rest. I'm sorry. Uh, signage once completed. Okay, um, you made the motion? Yes. There's a second. Second. Irene? Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. The next item on the agenda was something that was discussed at the workshop. Um, I'm going to recap it. We have a Peter, Dan Klein's waving at you. Okay, let me actually uh, roll over. I can only show so many people at a, at a time on the, the menu at the top there. Okay, Dan, you should get a prompt to unmute. Thank you. Yeah. 
Peter, where do we stand with the signage for the entrance at Stonecroft Village? We actually stand in a very good spot for that. I'm going to be doing a, a recap at the end of the supervisor comments, but the, the long and short of it is we can place signage without additional ordinance based on Title 75. So there's going to be some, some discussion around that uh, with the full intent on my part, at the very least, to put forward motions about placing uh, four to six signs throughout town to support uh, pop -up, pop -up, proper uh, visual distancing at intersections. Yeah, you've got the same situation at Water Street mm -hmm. coming yep. out of the township building. So there's actually, and I'll actually, we'll, I guess we'll cover this now since it came up. The, the intent here is to put a couple of signs, one on either side of the, the intersections along Stonecroft on Conrad Weiser Boulevard, where the, the complaint came in from, uh, in support of the Title 75 regulations around uh, distance to a corner for parked cars. Um, and uh, along Main Street at Water, and I'm thinking probably at Sharp as well. So that uh, if you're trying to pull out on the Main Street that you don't have a, a visual obstruction either to the left or to the right. Left is honestly the, the more pressing of the two because it's very difficult to see that the oncoming traffic past the parked cars. Uh, but it is, it is an on the books law that we can place signage in an effort to support people adhering to. When can we expect those signs to go up? So, Andy, we don't need an ordinance or anything around that. It's a simple matter of us authorizing the purchase of the signs and then me telling the road crew to go plop them in the ground, correct? That's correct. Okay, so theoretically, very quickly. Thank you. Please take that with a, a slight, slight asterisk or grain of salt that everything with a, with a government tends to move a little on the slow side, but <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it, it's going to be pretty quick by comparison. It's, it's something that we we have figured out the best way to approach and the best way to, to deal with, and we're going to do it as, as fast as we can. Now, I, uh, are you going to notify the residents who are parking these vehicles in this spot, both on Water Street and other places that you're putting this signage up? My personal assessment is I'm not going to send out a mailer to everybody in the community. I'm going to put the sign, no, no. but I'm not going to tell the police to start ticketing for at least a little bit, give people a grace period to, to acclimate to the fact that there's there's signs there. That's, okay. that's my, my gentleman's approach to it is we're going to put the signs up. That's your warning. And we just won't, won't enforce actively at this time. Okay. But uh, we'll, we'll hash out some of the more details towards the end because that's Part of the, the comments i slipped that in rather than an actual agenda item but uh okay, just, uh, okay. that's enough <laughs> <laughs> let me, uh, let me find dan and mute dan again there we go okay uh the next item on the agenda is the stonecroft hoa letter that we received around the street lights uh we discussed this on uh saturday uh dan and fred were both present and there's a little bit of discussion back and forth around that but uh, i felt it important to, to keep here and recap um, the township is fully committed to, to helping in whatever capacity we can on a lot of things, really anything that we can. However, this particular point, as we discussed on Saturday, is, is probably outside of our, our realm. And with Jim here, I just want to reinforce that fact from an engineering standpoint. In terms of the streetlights that they, they leased for you guys uh, under your name rather than purchasing, um, really isn't an actual sticking point in the plan. The plan says that they have to put streetlights there. And that's why in the past, the bonds were reduced uh, in accordance with those lights becoming present was they're there. Um, Jim, is there anything that you maybe want to add on to that or clarify that for the, the Stonecroft residents around really the, the lack of functional distinction between lease and purchase as long as if a plan says there needs to be X amount of streetlights there and there are X amount of streetlights there? Yeah, the, the way the MBC works on escrowing items is just the item has to be installed. So whether it's purchased, leased, whatever, um, it's installed and functioning. And then we have, we have to, by the MPC, within 30 days of their request uh, of the release, release the uh, funds for those items that are installed or the township is actually at, at fault in, uh, and violates the MPC and the bond. And they can actually then request their bond to be released in full because the township didn't act in 30 days. So the plan just calls for street lights to be installed. The ownership or leasing of those lights is not discussed. Okay, thank you. So like I said, if there are points that we can assist you on, we're 
we're here to help. I know I, I speak for myself as well as Irene and, and Jim. Um, we're here to try to make things better. So if there's things that we can do to help you accomplish that or to, to right wrongs or, or fix things, that's, that's why we're here. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Eagle Disposal. Uh, Eagle Disposal sent out a letter and flyer about Governor Wolf's proposed $1 per, uh, per ton tipping fee increase. Um, the, the long and short of it is they're asking that we send a letter to our state uh, representatives asking to oppose this. Um, I don't have a problem with sending a, a short letter saying that we're, we're not in favor of raising any fees or creating additional fees on anything. Um, Irene or, or Jim, if you're in favor of this, this may be something that I, I work with you on, but delegate largely to, to one of you guys. It doesn't have to be war and peace. It would just be a- oh, I'm a, just thinking how to drop a letter. What was that? I'm just thinking uh, maybe I'll sit down and start to draft a letter. Okay. So um, if you're interested in sending that, just to cover the base, just in case, uh, I would say we uh, send a, or we make a motion to have the board send the letter. So uh, am I am I getting the the vibe from you guys that we should send a letter in opposition? I second that. Okay. So uh, thank you, Jim. That was the motion. Yeah. First of all. I'll, I'll, let's actually let's revisit that. I'll make the motion to send a letter in opposition of the one dollar per ton tipping fee increase. And I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, Jim. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, with that said, the increase, the way the contract is worded, it cannot be leveraged mid-cycle. Um, there are some provisions about annual increases on contracts that are, are in place, but it's not like they can randomly charge an additional quantity of, or a fee uh, just because this goes into place. It, it not midway through the year at the very least. Okay. Uh, the next item is largely for informational purposes only. The Marlin and Wilma Martin letter of credit uh, was auto increased from $42,466.70 to $46,713.37. Uh, $46, no action is needed from us at this time. Okay, and the last item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, so I will actually start by kind of reiterating what I stated on Saturday. Um, the board, myself, Irene, Jim, uh, we as a whole, we're here to work to address this issue along with any other issues in the best and most efficient way possible and to make sure that we protect those not only within the affected area of the, the proposed change with the Act 537, but the whole township. Um, we're working to try to protect you from undue hardship, whether it's financial or, or otherwise. Uh, the bottom line here is that if we were to pull the plan right now, aside from the fact that the, the department could start issuing orders, fines, penalties, all sorts of things, uh, it would sour any goodwill that we currently have with them and would likely reflect poorly on us if we ever had to take this to the, the any of any court in the future, simply because we had not exhausted all available options prior to doing that. Um, if the time comes where we have to discuss the option of following the plan, please believe me, it's something that we will we will consider, but we are considering all of the other aspects that, that come into this. We want to approach this smart, tactically, instead of trying to bulldoze our way through the obstacle. Uh, figuratively speaking, coming out swinging at the DEP. Uh, as for the whole COVID-19 thing, once this clears, it's it's our serious intent to have a town hall where everybody can be face-to-face -face in the same room and hopefully civilly have a discussion around the changes that we want to make, the revisions that we want to make, and our, our path, our strategy towards making it the best thing for Marion Township that it possibly can be. Um, None of us want to see anyone forced out of their house and home for any reason, uh, regardless of the underlying reason. Uh, we're pursuing the path that we've assessed to, to be what gets us the best desi desired results while avoiding uh, really as much or any legal actions that we can. Um, 
Irene or, or Jim, is there anything that you want to add to that or, or touch on further? Uh, I know there's a little more discussion around this Saturday, and I don't, I don't think we have to completely uh, dredge that up, but I felt it was important to try to reiterate that for those who were on the call and potentially haven't watched the, the Saturday meeting. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone, I'm here to work for you. That was my goal from the beginning, and I'm holding to it, and that's my promise. And we are all working hard to work. We lost Irene at like the worst time. Irene, you, you cut out there for about 20 seconds. <laughs> it's okay. I just, I need you to come help me with my internet connection. Yeah. I'll, I'll and I, take a look. Yeah. I just want to remind everyone in the community that we're here working for you. Thank you. Uh, the, the final point that I would add just as an update, the, the environmental hearing board appeal that uh, Dr. Nelson and Cage had been making uh, was withdrawn largely as a response to the current board's uh, willingness and interest in revising the plan. So that, that legal matter has been withdrawn. Uh, Andy, that was, was that yesterday or the day before? Uh, I think it was I think it was two days ago. Okay. Um, it, was, it was officially filed. So yes, that is, that is withdrawn and the matter is now um, terminated. Okay. The only thing that I would, so, I would leave. Go ahead. I, I think what, um, I think what DEP may be looking for, and I don't, they haven't put any time frame on it as far as I know, but I think they're, they're looking for um, some sort of direction from the township. Um, and it doesn't have to be an official revision, but just kind of an overview um, of what the township is thinking. So, you know, that's something I know that they, they would want to, review and for the last number of years they haven't done any sort of reviews like that basically it's a preliminary review and they stopped doing that a number of years ago because they had limited staff and they they just stopped that um program right jim um so oh, he's on mute but yeah no so I pulled they've off. they've requested that yeah, that that's something that they want to do in this case, um, for whatever reason. Okay, I, like I said, I'm yeah. I'm happy that they're they're receptive to the idea. They're they seem willing to entertain whatever we put forward. What that translates to and what our next steps are after that, we'll we'll have to take that as they come. But uh, the bottom line is that the, the the lines of communication are open in ways that have not been open previously. Yeah, Tim Tim Wagner called me last Friday. And he expressed he'd asked me, you know, was had the township prepared anything because uh, Jenna and the attorneys had said to him they were had asked him had gotten anything from us or the township. I guess they were expecting some type of like it, it almost sounded like not even to the level of like a draft plan, just kind of generally the ideas of the supervisors moving forward. If you were looking to make any modifications to the plan, you know just kind of bullet point what they were and sort of send that memo in to them to get them to at least give us input back on whether they feel they would go along with that or, you know, maybe if we ask for five things to go along with three and say no on two or whatever, but at least to get the ball rolling without spending a lot of, of, of money on revising a plan because the amount of money that's been spent on this plan over the last 25 years is just crazy. Um, so, I was like almost taken back when Tim said that because as Andy said, for the last 15 years, they haven't reviewed draft plans like that. That was something that historically, you know, in the eighties and nineties, when we would do it, as we would find something, we'd say, well, based on what we found, we think X, Y, and Z, and here's what we found and send it into them. And they would comment on it. And then you would, then you would do the plan and kind of have like a pre indication of whether they were going to go along with or push back on things. So, I was pleasantly shocked at that phone conversation Friday afternoon. Yeah, and there is a willingness as well to sit down whenever whenever that may be, you know, because of this, but to sit down in the, in the same room. So, um, you know, that's on the table too. Okay, I know I've got some, some notes around the things that I, I'd like to focus on for change. 
Um, Irene, Jim, I'm sure you probably have likewise. Um, I think the best thing to do would be to try to get that together. Um, with us, uh, Andy, does that, does that technically count as like deliberating if we were to bounce lists off of each other and have me merge them down? Um, so you're not, you're not, no, it's, it's, it's more informational than anything because you're not, you're not making any decisions. Um, any, any um, decisions and deliberations would be done at a meeting. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, Irene, Jim, give me your thoughts and things that you want around change. I'll provide my list as well, and we'll, we'll get a list together that we can send over to the DEP around really what we're looking to accomplish. Um, it is actually, it's a, it's a bit of a relief. I've started doing like a type over on the plan. I, I fully understand that it would have to go through engineering before it would be like official if we go that route, but um, just something to, to kind of shorten the, the curve on development time, if you will. Um, it's definitely Peter, ready. Do you have the Word time? document? Do you have the Word documents? Do you want me to send them to you if you're going to do a type over? Uh, if you would, that'd be fantastic. I've been retyping everything by hand off of the PDF. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to send an email right now to the guys to send you that tomorrow so I don't forget. I, I appreciate it. It makes my life a little bit easier. I'm about 40 pages into it. so. Oh, my God. I wish you called me before you started page one. Okay. Well, that's good. Right. Thank you. Um, but uh, it, it kind of is a relief that we don't have to go through the full exercise of writing out the, the full like regimented planning material and we can give them a bullet point of really our thoughts, what we're trying to, what we're trying to yeah. accomplish here, the spirit of what we're doing. Okay. okay. Irene, Jim, any statements? I mean, honestly, even Jim McCarthy or Andy George, any additional statements we want to make around the Act 537? Doesn't have to be written in legalese, Jim. Thankfully, no. No, I, no, I think at this point, they're really just looking for like a, a memo from the supervisors with bullet points. I mean, I, mm -hmm. that's the impression I got from Tim Wagner on Friday. Um, and I believe that it, it seemed like his call to me was prompted by um, Jenna and the, and the lawyers, not so much him from the planning engineering side, because um, I forget when that was. It was like a week before he left me that message that I forwarded to everyone about how it's like me to respond. And I kind of like, just left him a voicemail and he didn't get back to me. And then he called me Friday and really didn't ask me about any of that and just said, what's going on and do we have this? So I think I would take advantage of them, you know, of putting the thoughts of the supervisors together into a bulleted memo and not spend a lot of dollars and get the feedback you're looking for. And, you know, maybe, you know, they seem very willing to work and cooperate with us. So let's take advantage of that and see if we can get that done at, uh, a cost-effective way and, and, it, and something that works for the township at the end of the day when the resident. Absolutely. So that's that's ultimately what we're trying to accomplish here is something that fits the bill for the needs of the township, the needs of the people that it's going to affect, and still is able to satisfy the, the regulatory requirements that the DEP has. I, I think I, I, we can get there. And I, I just, I think the, you know, it, it's fine, I think, to develop that, you know, in between the meetings, but then Run it, run it through the next meeting and, and formally discuss it and then formally vote to submit it. Okay, I think that's, I agree, that's the best course of action and that's what we'll do. So Jim and Irene, we'll, we'll be in touch with Circulate List. We'll get that together in a nice, uh, cohesive, readable format for next meeting where we can discuss on, on public record and uh, get our list to DEP following the next uh, Thursday meeting. Do you want me to give them just like a little update of that's what our plan is moving forward? By all means, please do. Please do. Okay. Because yeah, I don't tell them anything that you don't tell me to tell them. <laughs> Fair. I appreciate the discretion, but in this case, absolutely please tell them that that's, that's something that we're, we're working towards. And okay. once again, we appreciate their patience around the fact that we're, we're only able to meet once a month or twice if you can't work right. it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we don't have anything further, that concludes the actual agenda items for the evening. Um, Sue, so I actually, I didn't see the police report. Was that one of the, the, the attachments in the packet? Yep, should be at the very end. And there it is. I looked by it the first time. You will have April and, or March, March and April, because I didn't have, because the electric went off last month. Ah, right, 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 right. So, for and May's, we didn't get May's. Yet, because May isn't over. Okay. 
So what I will do is I will give a, a relatively quick recap on this. It looks like, and uh, the PDF is sideways for the, for the time being, so it, or my, my job angle yeah, they, they changed the format of how they're sending it to us, so that's yeah, so it's different. It looks like it was relatively uneventful. There was about the same amount of things that there usually are. The miles patrolled is always right about the same. Uh, the number of complaints, uh, incidents is always right about the same. Um, I will split these out of the packet and put them up on that public Google Drive for anybody that would like to see the police reports. Uh, I, I personally feel that that's a, a matter of public record that you shouldn't necessarily even need a right to know for. So I'll, I'll get those out there probably either this evening or tomorrow uh, for anyone who is interested in looking at them. Okay. Uh, beyond that, the road crew has done some of the roadside mowing and will be working with the Tulpe road crew and the Tulpe Pocken police around mowing 419 on June 1st. Uh, we, we have actually started patching potholes as well, uh, but the road crew is looking forward to going out and patching more potholes. So if you happen to see one, uh, I would say send an email to the township. If you have to call, call and leave a message with Sue. Uh, hopefully in future months, we'll be able to use that, that text messaging function that I'm getting set up uh, to be able to take that, that statement in for where we need to do some road work. And uh, we'll, as we know of them, we'll try and address them as fast as we can. Uh, Sue, for for the record, I did not get a chance to call Butch. Okay. Today. Do you want me to call him tomorrow? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I was I going to do it today, but I didn't have time. <laughs> no, I, I that that's been my entire week this week, Sue. So I can okay. totally understand. Uh, I understand because it's been crazy. <laughs> if not, I'll try and give him the call in the evening, even if it's just a simple matter of leaving him a voicemail. If it's a little later on in the evening. Right. One way or the other, one of us will take care of it. So I, I appreciate your assistance on that. Yep. Um, so the only other thing I had was the signage on the various places for the, the no parking from here to corner. Um, I'm thinking we should probably get, just as a, a conservative estimate, 10 signs and the hardware. If we have a couple, I, I'm thinking we probably would have two extra, but uh, I'm sure we can find other places that could, could warrant that in other areas of the township. Um, we're gonna need between two and four along Water Street and probably another four or six, depending on uh, how things actually translate along uh, Conrad Wiser Boulevard for Stonecroft. Um, I'll be honest, I don't off the top of my head recall how much one of the signs and the, the mounting hardware is, but uh, we have places that we normally go to for that and it's, it's gonna be it's going to be what it's going to be. So uh, do you guys agree with the, the general placement around those signs uh, that the, the intersections of Stonecroft to Conrad Weiser Boulevard and Main Street? Oh, absolutely. Things like Water Street or Sharp? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will make a motion to purchase 10 no parking, uh, ideally if we can get no parking here to corner, uh, signs and the needed mounting hardware. I'll second that. <laughs> and I have to start having you guys pick a number and see which one's closest for who gets back in. We'll give it to Jim. Okay. <laughs> Irene Jim had, I, I think Irene had more than Jim, so we'll give it to Jim. <laughs> uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, that's all the comments that I have. Um, Irene, do you have anything that you would like to bring up or, or bring to our yeah. attention? Yes, um, I'm gonna get John to see if he could uh, at least provide an email format for a monthly report for the activities that he's been doing. And uh, when he has something good to share, hopefully get him on to these meetings too. I know he participated in the workshop uh, meeting. He didn't have anything else to add for this evening. Okay. You heard me okay? Yep. Okay. Then the second issue, I think I had sent it out as an email, um, and Sue uh, had expressed a concern when it comes to bill paying, because we're bringing Dan on as a treasurer or alternate treasurer um, to have a resolution. Otherwise, it would be just such an enormous accumulation of paperwork. Oh. We lost you for that five okay. there. 
um, a resolution to have Dan, uh, a resolution to okay uh, weekly bill payments. Um, otherwise it would just be a large amount of paperwork that we have at the office and it would be kind of difficult and untimely if we were to wait, you know, month by month to have all the bills paid. Okay. Andy, from a, a legal standpoint, if we were to pass a resolution allowing that, and from what Irene researched, that is something that is relatively commonplace. Um, would we be able to use a mechanism of uh, Dan sending out a, an Excel spreadsheet of these are the bills for the week, what it is and the amount and that we could review and say, yeah, we're okay with that. We, we're, we're aware of it and we can come in and sign off on it at like either weekly or biweekly intervals to actually get the check for the mail. Uh, you're, you're on mute. A Andy, hold on, you're on, you're on mute. <laughs> Not the first time that happened to me. <laughs> so the answer is yes, you, you can do that. And that is, that's typically done. So, but you, you would want to ratify, you know, that those payments that are made and those bills that are paid at the next meeting. Um, and that might be a, just a line item on the, like the front of our agenda to have that done. Okay. So, so we, we uh, would need you to prepare a resolution around that then? Yeah. Does okay. PSATs have, does PSATs have a form, Irene? Do you know? I didn't, I didn't look at that, but I will. Uh, yeah, I can find, I can find one. Too. Okay. All right. Okay. Jim. Do you have any comments or things that you'd like to bring up? Well, the Stonecroft HOA has established a transition team to for the handoff from Landmark to the HOA. And I attended their first meeting yesterday and just assured them that if there's anything that they needed from us uh, as a whole, from our staff and from the supervisors, to uh, just let us know and They'll complete the proper paperwork to get the information that they require. So uh, I'll continue to keep you apprised of what's going on with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, one of the one of the things that I, I can't underscore enough is, despite the fact that historically we've been very very pocketized, very fractured as communities, we are one big community, and I'd like to see us get back to or, or get to a point where we're we're functioning a little more like one giant community rather than a lot of isolated little pockets or, or, or neighborhoods. So absolutely, I, I look forward to, to hearing how we can assist in whatever capacity we can with the, the residents of Stonecraft. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andy? Um, so um, the zoning ordinance amendments and the Joint Planning Commission, we, we started that process and then COVID-19 interrupted it. Um, I think that things are gonna hopefully get back to normal um, in the next couple months. So I think that there'll probably be an in-person meeting. I'm hoping for the, for the Joint Planning Commission. So that's something that we need to just keep, keep on the radar. Um, and I'll, I'll make an inquiry with, uh, with Lisa Heilman. I think she's the secretary for the Joint PC. Okay. Uh, to see if something like that can be, uh, meet, when the next meeting is going to be. Okay, so just out of, out of curiosity, because I know they would have to advertise us, but if they want to do something virtually, I'd be happy to assist with getting them set up. They can even use our Zoom account if they want to do that. If they don't have that in place. Um, that, I'd be happy to offer that assistance if that's the route they want to go. I'll, I'll pass that on. Some municipalities are better than others, believe me. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's been some real disasters. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So that's very, very much been on, on my radar because I had tried to go to, actually, I went to that, that meeting and tried to go to the other one before they canceled. Uh, so just so we can get that through the, the last couple of hurdles that it has to go through prior to being actually adopted. Yeah. Thank we you. are very fortunate to have Peter as our tech expert. <laughs> well, th thank you, Jim. Um, uh, other Jim, Jim McCarthy, do you have any comments or things that you'd like to bring to our attention? Nope, I think everything is moving forward. I think I let everyone know that, the, the, that unfortunately the district doesn't have any low volume dirt and gravel road money for 2020. So um, they just said hold off and reapply for any of those projects after January to get next year's funding. Okay. So do you happen to know, will they be offering the, the seminar since they're not able to do it in person? Or is there any talk of doing it virtually? No, they're not doing them virtually. They're making you go and 
Um, they've just we, – we've inquired – it became less of an issue because they have no money. But um, <laughs> Dean said that the, they haven't even said if they're going to, like, move all the canceled ones and have them in the fall. So they're just kind of waiting and seeing. Okay. Because right now nobody at DEP is like – when I talked to Tim Wagner, you know, he was saying, well, even if the hearing went forward – what wasn't withdrawn he says that building's closed so i don't even know how we would have the hearing so they're sort of all working remotely and and he said he goes in once a week to get the mail <laughs> um, yeah. okay well if we don't have any any additional items for comment or just actually i apologize too i looked right by the thing on the thing. uh do you Nothing. have any comments i don't have anything awesome um in that case being as we have no additional items or comments, I will motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.06 p.m. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Hi. Jim. Oh, Irene, sorry. <laughs> Jim. Hi. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you have a a great weekend and stay safe, please. Thank okay. you. you too. Yeah. Have a good night. Yes.